Yo! Right, if you follow this channel, you'll know I've got a Mark V Mondeo 2 litre diesel engine here that has seized up. But just in case you missed that party, let me refresh your memory. A few weeks back, maybe a month back, I can't know, I'm losing track of time here. We had a driver pull up. His engine was rattling, really rattling badly. I checked the engine oil, it was fine. So I, <laughs> I drove the car inside the garage and before I was able to switch the engine off, it stopped by itself. The engine had locked up, seized up solid. Luckily, we had an engine all built up ready. So we swapped the engine, got the car back on the road, it's all done and gone. I now have this engine here, which was seized up. With a little bit of brute force, we've managed to free it off and spin the engine over now. Although it does turn over, it, it's horrible to turn it over. You can tell like the shells are all screwed up, which I'm going to have a look at shortly. And you'll know that I've made some videos on this. I've showed you how to remove the high pressure fuel pump, how to time it up on the cam belt as well, how to replace the cam belt. There isn't a whole lot more I can do with this engine, apart from take off all the good bits and then give the rest of it to the scrap man. But I want to know what went wrong with this. I want to know why the engine seized up. And I've got a hunch, but I'm not gonna say just yet. First thing I'm gonna do, this is gonna be like a two-fold video. The first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove the cylinder head. But I'm just gonna give you an overview of how I'm gonna remove it. I'm not gonna go step by step because it would, it would just take too long. But I'm gonna try and explain this as if you were removing the cylinder head in the car. Because there's something I wanna know. I want to know whether this turbo, and the turbo unit on this is part of the manifold. So to remove the turbo, you'd have to remove the entire manifold. I'm under the belief the whole turbo is gonna come off with the head as one unit, if it were in the car. So we'll, we'll do that in a minute and we'll find out. So I'm just going to start taking stuff off this and I'm going to strip all the head down, remove the head, then I'm going to spin this engine upside down, we're going to take the sump off and we're going to have a look at the oil pump. That's what I'm aiming for and we're going to look at all the shells and see what the damage is. Right, you'd have to excuse but a lot of the stuff has already been taken off this, like your EGR valve, bits and pieces like that. But there's a wiring loom, it runs right down your engine, it connects onto your EGR valve, onto your throttle housing. There's three wires, three connectors here, which connect onto oil switches down by your oil filter. They've all got to come off. And you'll have this whole wiring loom now, which you can like lift up to the top of the engine. And you'll kind of have quite a, quite a bunch of wires like that. But you see you've got this whole great big loom that runs across the top of your rocker cover. It's in like, like plastic casing. And you've got to unclip it all. And then all the wires that go down to your thermostat housing, your high pressure fuel pump. They, this wiring loom runs down the back of your engine as well, onto your crankshaft position sensor. It connects onto your turbo. If I were just taking the rocker cover off, I could leave this wiring connected up to your turbo. But because we're going to take the head off, we're going to need the whole wiring loom completely off. So all the plug connectors that connect down the back here, you've got some plug connectors on your turbo, You've got, there'd be a bracket here with more plug connectors on them which go down to your sensors on your DPF. You'd have wiring down the back of the cam belt here which would go onto your crankshaft sensor and another one would go onto like an oxygen sensor. They'd all got to come off. The plug that goes into your ECU you haven't got a touch. Plus this plug connector would be covered over with a bracket with shear bolts that you wouldn't be able to undo easily anyway. But once the entire wiring loom is disconnected you can then like move the whole lot over to like the driver's side and just put the whole lot out of the way. Stick it up on your inner, inner wing or somewhere like that. Because this engine's scrap anyway, I've removed the entire loom. So well, I'm not going to fling this, I'm going to keep this loom because sometimes it might, there, there might come a day when I'll need this loom. But it just shows that the entire wiring loom for the engine is one separate loom to the rest of the car, which is good. It can be replaced. You know, long gone are the days 
when you could remove a cylinder head on a car quite easily, like an old Ford Pinto engine or an old Vauxhall 8 valve overhead, overhead cam. Flipping it, I'm telling you, to remove a cylinder head on one of these modern diesel engines is an absolutely bloody nightmare. Anyway, brake vacuum pump, high pressure fuel pump, they've both got to come off because they sit in like the cylinder head and the top cover which has got to be removed. The fuel filter and how the whole housing assembly would have to be removed. There are a number of like 8mm screws which hold like this whole, there's like a whole plastic housing assembly sort of thing which holds all your fuel pipes. And once you've unclipped your leak off pipes from your injectors, this whole piece will literally come off as one great big assembly. So that kind of gives you any kind of idea. You've got your four leak off pipes, you've got your fuel pipes going around to your pump, and then all, obviously them fuel pipes come back round and go onto like your fuel filter here. But yeah, you, you, can, you can take this thing off as one great big assembly. Just a few things here down the front of the engine. The EGR valve where it slots into the cylinder head, you're going to have to take the valve out completely, just take it off the car. Your dipstick tube is bolted to the cylinder head on a bracket anyway, so that's going to have to be removed. I've already removed the four diesel injectors from this engine. It's not rocket science to remove them, so I don't think I have to explain how to do it. But I will say, I've never had one of these injectors stuck in one of these engines. They come out ever so easy. You are going to need to remove all the fuel pipes and the fuel rail, it's just easier. There's a 10 mil which holds a bracket on top of the rocker cover. So we'll get that one off. And there are two 10 mils, ah, there we go, which hold your actual fuel rail onto the cylinder head. It's just as easy to take these two 10 mils out and remove the fuel rail complete with all the injector pipes. Because this thermostat housing has a pipe, a metal pipe coming out the back of it, which goes down to the back of the block where the water pump is, you're gonna to need to remove this. You could just unbolt it and leave it hanging here, but you know what, in all honesty, it'd be better just to unbolt the whole thermostat housing, remove the 10 mil clamp on that pipe and just take the whole thing out the way. When you're removing these housings, they can be stuck on the seals where the pipe goes in the back. So you'd have to try and wriggle them off. Oh, this, this one's come off quite easily. You would typically change the cam belt anyway if you were taking the head off. So I made a video on how to replace that cam belt. Here. But because this engine is scrap and I don't care anyway, I'm just going to undo the tensioner and pull the belt off. I wouldn't normally do this, but what the hell. That's it. Yeah, get off. This engine bracket that your main engine mount goes onto, it's got to come off. It bolts onto the head and onto the block. So it's like four 16mm bolts. And I'll take this off. Don't forget that one of your tensioner pulleys slots into the bottom of this bracket. And you would obviously have the bottom cover off as well. Now your diesel particulate filter is going to be held on this bracket at the back of the engine. So like there's like two 13mm and two 10mm. You're going to unbolt the DPF there. The DPF will be held on here, on this like joint, and there'll be a clamp with a 16mm nut. Once you undo that nut and take the clamp off, it should be loose here. And then where the DPF is here, if you follow it back, there'll be like two 15mm nuts that hold it onto the main middle section of the exhaust. And I would take the whole DPF assembly right off the car. As I said earlier, I'm hoping like if this was in the car, to remove the cylinder head and the turbo all as one assembly. Because standing underneath the car at the back, trying to undo the turbo and all the manifold bolts and all these bloody tin plates, heat shields, is gonna be a right pain. So, the oil feed for the turbo is down the back of the block, which is 17 mil. So I'm gonna undo that nut, and actually, it's looking like there's a bracket which goes behind this plate here. So I think this actual plate that DPF sits on has got to come off as well. 
Anyway, I'll get this bolt out first. There we go. Oh no, no, tell a lie. That isn't bolted to nothing. That's good. The oil return feed hose from your turbo goes onto a pipe which goes into your block. So I'm going to get that clamp out of the way. And I'm kind of figuring this isn't going to come off too easy. I can safely say that's well and truly stuck on. Look at that. The roll grips are just ripping the hose to pieces. We would replace this hose and pipe anyway. Even our oil feed pipe to the turbo is going to get replaced if you were taking it off. I think I'm just going to cut this pipe just to get it off. I think I can safely say that pipe was absolutely glued itself <laughs> onto this metal pipe. Anyway, now I've completely destroyed it, it's off. But just to make the point again, in all honesty, you would be best to replace, if you were just changing this turbo or the head for whatever reason, you're taking this turbo off. This oil return pipe and this main feed pipe, you would replace it all because this nut, there'll be like a filter in here and they can get blocked up. So it's, it's, it's worth just changing the whole bloody assembly and be done with it. I've just noticed this little plastic cover here. It seems to be bolted onto the cylinder head of a 10 mil at the back of this sprocket. And also there's another 10 mil around the back of this cover, which is, goes into the block. So I reckon this has got to come off. So I'm going to take this camshaft sprocket right off because I think I think this is going to be in the way to cause problems. It's, it should come off anyway if you're taking the head off. I'll just try and skimp. That should wriggle off now. Yeah. It's coming. It's getting loose. That's it. We're off. Yeah, just as I thought. There's always bloody something. Two 10 mils and there's another 10 mil around the back of this cover. And I reckon this whole little plastic shield cover has got to come completely off and there's the last little lovely right at the back of the engine <laughs> you'll probably have to get that from underneath yeah nice there's always one little nuance in there right we're getting to the nitty gritty now the black top back rocker cover there's like 14 8 mil bolts we've got to undo and these bolts don't come out. They're like, they stay captive in the cover. So you ain't got to worry about dropping any of these bolts. With the use of a pry bar, this should come up quite easily. Uh, in actual fact, that was a little bit stuck down. <laughs> but anyway, cool. That will lift straight off. There is a rubber gasket on the base of this so you would have to replace this gasket if you were to sort of like change it because that that rubber goes like rock hard and that will leak flipping t-brake did i point out i probably didn't never ever have i had to remove a cylinder head on one of these engines yet and I can tell you we've had a lot of drivers run out of water run out of coolant and continue driving these cars until the dash lights are all flashing up overheating and never have we had a head gasket go as far as I know <laughs> which is good and I'll tell you what I'm glad I'm actually doing this out of the car because I can tell you doing this in the car would not be funny and if it was a pay, if you had to pay to have this job done, it'd cost you an absolute goddamn fortune. Anyhow, where are we? We're up to removing the, the top main camshaft cover. There are 33 8 mil bolts to remove. I suggest if you've got some kind of battery powered gun to undo these, then do it. <laughs> Right, let's get all these removed. Take note which bolts come out of which holes because some of them are actually different lengths. Finally, number 33. 
<laughs> now this cam cover, number one, it's stuck down with some sealant, not much mind you. And also there's a couple of dowels. So we're gonna need a lever to try and prise this up. It's either gonna come up easy or it's gonna be a pig. There you go. Notice one of the dowels that hold it in, they can get a little bit rusty. And that whole cover will now just lift off like that. Sweet. And just in case you didn't know, there is a little gasket here. If you take this cover off, you'd have to replace this. Whoa, straight away, there should be a plastic guide under this chain. It's completely gone. Whether that's got anything to do with the engine season up, I doubt it very much, but I guess we'll find out shortly. Even if it wasn't, it wouldn't be long before this chain was gonna break like the last one. Because I remember the, in my last video, where the plastic guide had gone, the chain had snagged on the metal part of this tensioner and snapped the chain. So, three eight mil bolts holding our tensioner down. Actually on this one, as I remove that last eight mil, the actual tension is lifting up, like under spring pressure, because the last tension I had out, the spring had broken into pieces. I'll check this one as well, but this one's looking more promising. <laughs> There's definitely a bit of spring left in it, even if it has got the guide gone. Anyway, get that bolt out. So now these camshafts, if I can, yeah, that's the seal off. Whoop. These camshafts should lift straight out with the chain and the tensioner. Yep, just like that. Yep. Right, I'm just gonna have a quick look at this, just to see. Ah, come on, get out. Right, so we know this guide's gone. That's been actually, that's actually chain has cut into that metal. That's, that's gonna break that chain eventually. This side, the guide's still there. Although I'll tell you something, going by the tracks that are in it, <laughs> that's badly worn. Right, the spring, yeah, that's, that's okay. The spring is actually all in one piece in this one, which is surprising. I reckon as soon as these cars get like over 200,000 miles, and these, these ones have had the proper oil changes, these guides are gonna be brave. This is like a, this is about the third or fourth one now. These are gonna be a problem. Yeah. Anyway. And these journals, where the camshafts sit in the head, do you know, they're okay. <laughs> you would have thought that the camshafts are like the furthest away from the oil pump, they would have copped it as well, but they seem really good. I can't find, really, I can't find anything wrong up here, camshaft and journal-wise. They look good. Right. Now I know all the rockers are okay because it's, the, you know, the timing was fine and everything like that. The engine was still running okay. That one's good as well. So I'm going to leave all these in place. I could, I could actually, I probably would be best to probably take all these out. But I might, actually I might do and then put them back in head when I'm done because I'm going to keep this head as a spare. In actual fact, I think what I'll do is, now the compressor's kicked in, I'll leave all these rockers in place for the time being, because I can actually get to all the head bolts now. There's 10 head bolts in this. Now these head bolts are E14s. Hmm, actually, this engine, I bet you the head bolts are really frigging tight. And I've got, there's a chance I'm gonna break this engine off this stand and it's gonna fall on the floor and make a right mess. So I think I'm going to move this stand actually and put it on the ramp to secure it a bit better. Right then. Yeah! Let's see how tight these bolts are. Oh, it's going. Yeah! Flipping neck. Ooh! God damn it! It's 
gone. So, uh, yeah, I'll kind of carry on and get the rest out. So this is it, last one. Bolt number 10. There. Mm. Here we go then. Will the cylinder head lift off with the turbo? I think so. Do you know, in actual fact, it's, it's actually loose, it, it isn't even stuck down. Right, I'm gonna see if I've got the strength to try and lift this, because I bet it's quite heavy. Right, we're stuck on something. No, we're not. It was just me. Maybe it's the head gasket making it stuck. Let me just flip this, flip it upside down. There, there you go, all the, tap, all the tap lights are dropping out. That's what a cylinder head looks like on a Mark 5 2 litre diesel. Whoopie doo. Right, while I'm here, at the back of the cylinder head here, by like, well, this would actually would be number number one cylinder by the flywheel. This is the actual uh, the oil return. There's a little strainer here. It's all clear though. You wouldn't want to get that blocked up. <laughs> There's your main, your main oil feed gallery through the head, just this hole here. Let's have a look at this gasket. This is like a tin gasket. Flipping heck, it's got one. <laughs> It's got a few sheets to it. One, two. There's like one, two, three, four sheets. Four sheets of metal and they all, they all crush up to make the seal. Blimey. I notice these pistons have got like a, a domed piece right in the middle of them. I guess, I'm just guessing here, I guess the fuel goes in there and kind of swells around to make it atomise better. Before I flick this upside down, I can't remember whether I drain the oil out of it. <laughs> okay, 90 degree twist. Oh, there's only drips. Yes, I did drain the oil. That can go back in then. You know, I don't think it's gonna matter what I do here. There's going to be a whole load of oil and water come pouring out of this. Yeah. Here we go. Look, look, it's leaking already. Ready for it. <laughs> yeah. Dirty. Dirty. <laughs> I'm taking a break. <laughs> but yeah, I'm actually getting really excited. I want to see what's underneath that sump. I want to see how much carnage there is. <laughs> anyway, I haven't been in the office this morning, so I think we should go and say hello, take a peek. Oh. Where's Mary? Should we mess with her computer? <laughs> uh, actually, I better not mess with that. It looks like a lot of detail. Mrs. Monica. Hello. Talk to the hand. I don't want to. I'm just going to see Mary. Okay. Whoa. Flipping neck. Mary. What? Hello. Smokes, let's go. <laughs> oh, no, no, that's my line. <laughs> smokes, smokes, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
Uh, there we go. She wouldn't. She wouldn't give me a cigarette. But you don't smoke. I know, but I wanted one anyway, just for this, <laughs> just because I wanted one. Okay, fair enough. You've just had a Subway sandwich, haven't you? Subway burger? Maybe. <laughs> Where's mine? Um, I can go. No, don't worry about it. Sorry. Guess what? What? This morning, this is a piece of news because this doesn't often happen. We had a guy in here, Mark Four Mondeo, replaced his rear trailing arm bushes and the reason he was here today was because he saw our video on YouTube how to replace your trailing arm bushes and guess how much I charged him? How much? £146 I think. Bargain? Yep, how I thought that was a good price. How much do you charge normally? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> well, I just okay. pull, I just pulled that figure out of the top of my hat. Well, let's hope it was a bargain then. Yeah. Anyway, how's your day going? I'm glad it's Friday. But so am I, because I tell you what, it's dirty out there. There's dirty oil, sweat and grit, and I need a shower. Flipping dismantling that engine. Well, some girls find it attractive. <laughs> hey, didn't, didn't you get a message from somebody about changing the oil on a Mondeo? Yeah, I did actually. They asked me if I if I know how to change a oil in one day on Mark IV. So you're going to do that, are you? Well, I don't know. Shall we? I, I I reckon I reckon for all the viewers, Monica should do a oil change on a Mondeo, so we can all see how you do it proper. Right. Okay. Show us how it's done. Okay. Right. You've got a bargain. You've got a deal. Yeah. Can't <laughs> back out of it now. <laughs> Right, I'll be going. Alright. Nice to see you. Yeah. Have fun. And you. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Anyway, I suppose we better get back onto this engine. Cool, hang on a minute. Uh, wrong way. There, that's better. Brighter. I don't like it when it's dark. Right. I suppose we better lift the sump off this engine. Let's see what the goddamn damage is. I'm actually getting really excited now because I really want to see what's wrong with this. There are 20 8mm bolts holding this plastic sump on. Let's get it off! <laughs> right, these bolts are like captive in the sump so they don't come out. Let's have a little prod with a screwdriver. So I don't think it's that. Nope. Nope. It's loose. It's loose. This is it. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. Yep. All right, Ian. Yeah, not Good bad. to see you there. How you doing? Not bad. Bring you down this neck of the woods. Aircon regas, mate. Aircon regas. Andy, what's your excuse? I've got a gearbox to put Shut up. <laughs> would, you, would you like a cup of coffee? If you don't mind, please, mate. Yeah, it'd be lovely. <laughs> what are you drinking, mate? Tea. Right. Bit early for beer. <laughs> <laughs> Flipping beer. I know I'm keeping you all in suspense, but unfortunately I've got visitors. I have to make the tea. That is actually my main job here. Making tea. This is it, guys. This is the moment of truth. Whoa! Look at that! Well, that's that then. Mm, that's that. See ya. What the hell? The rest of the chain is down here. There we go. <laughs> and this pump, do you know what? There's actually like a, a bit of play in that. It turns, it's not locked up or nothing. I think I might take this oil pump off, unbolt it and have a look inside. Just to see if it locked up at all. There. 
The funny thing is, this chain uh, has literally, it's broken into two pieces. That, uh, that's not good. So I'm kind of figuring why, why is it bust in actual two places rather than just one? Anyhow, let's get this sump out of the way. The oil pickup pipe on this oil pump got like a wire gauze in it. That looks clean, so there's nothing blocking it. Not like you get on the BMW ones. <laughs> they, they, have the, they have the gorge on the BMWs. They have the gorge up here, and then then the, all the crap bits of plastic get sucked into a very thin pipe, and then they block up inside the oil pump. But this is a different setup. This one actually looks okay. The funny thing is, well, it's not actually a funny thing, because this oil pump is bolted on uh, in like three bolts going this way and one of them you can't get to. So this whole extension piece around here is going to have to come off before I can unbolt this inner plate. So there's a tonne of six millimetre Allen key bolts which I've got to whack out. So all the bolts are out. Sorry but I lost count of how many there are. Now this, this sandwich plate, now this is glued down with sealant. So I'm going to see if it's going to... Oh! Oh my god! I, ex I actually expected it to be harder than that. <laughs> oh, must be my lucky day. Anyway, let's get this lifted up. So this whole lump should... What's stopping it? Dipstick tube. I should have taken that out. Anyway, there we go. We're off. Nice. By, by the way, while I'm here, all the 6mm Allen key bolts that hold this on, there's about three different sizes of bolts. So you have to take note what holes the bolts come out of. There are three 10mm bolts holding this oil pump on. So I'm going to waz all these three out. I've just noticed while I'm doing this oil pump that this bit here is actually broken. Actual flat. Yeah, and this, this is like monkey metal, aluminium. That's completely snapped off. So, I don't know. I don't know why that's broke like that. Hmm. It's getting interesting. Okay, last bolt. There. Ah! So we've got a whole bunch of Torx 30 bolts holding this oil pump together. So I'll get all these undone. Okay. Yeah, get out of it. Right, let's see if this comes apart. It's a coming. Anything interesting? That actually, I'm looking for like anything that might be like gouges in it, any lines in it. That actually looks okay. So, hmm, these little veins here. I want these little bits here that go into that oil pump vein. I wonder if they just, yeah, they just slide out. I wonder if this whole bit, oh yeah, it will. This whole piece will come out. It's going to leave all these bits in there. This is going to be a problem. I'm actually, it's got some scores on it, but there's nothing to like say, you know, something to show that it actually locked up. Interesting. There's 
take all these bits out. Because I tell you, these, these little pieces here, the, actually this, this one here, that looks pretty badly scored. I'm not, I'm not liking that. That is not good. It's nice and smooth one side, but the other side, that's, uh, that's not good at all. I wouldn't be surprised if this was just worn, worn to the point that it just snagged and locked. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever way I look at it, these, these little bits in here, they were well like scored up. So I can, I can imagine it's just worn out and it's just got, it's just actually snagged it. Cause actually feeling this, this now, it feels like really like, <laughs> not nice. It doesn't, it doesn't want to turn. <laughs> I know that's just because I'm holding it in my hand and it's, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know, really don't know. Not sure. Anyway, let's whack this plate off and uh, have a look at the main bell, main bearing shells and crankshaft big end. Shells. <coughs> yep. Right, well, I'm just going to bang off a few of these main bearing caps. <coughs> okay, let's see what the damage is. Oh, huh. <laughs> this one actually looks okay. <laughs> Aha, so far all the journals on this crankshaft have been fine, apart from this one, right by the actual flywheel. Yeah, this bearing is completely shagged. Flipping state of that. Bloody hell. Mind you, it's not as bad as what it was in that, that petrol engine I took apart a few weeks back. But flipping heck, it's hard to believe that the, this pair of shells on, on one big end cap has literally locked the engine up while it was running, made the engine cut out and just locked it up solid. That must have been flipping hot. It isn't even worn like paper thin like I've seen in the past. But there again, this engine didn't run out of oil. It just uh, stopped pumping it. <laughs> Anyway, that's twatted. The funny thing is, this main bearing journal, it doesn't actually look that bad. But I can tell you something, I wouldn't, I wouldn't dare put new shells on that. If I compare that to this journal, which was practically okay, it does look a little bit purpley, if you know what I mean. Like it, it was starting to get a bit warm. <laughs> but that's that's definitely salvageable so we'll whack off a few of these big end caps off <coughs> let's see Whoop. that's actually that's a good one tell you what though for a car that's done like well over 200,000 miles. This flipping big end shell, it's like brand spanking new. That, that actually is impressive. Shall we pop a piston out? <laughs> there we go. Ooh. Flipping neck, that was tight coming out the bore. I will have to say the top piston ring is a uh, Okay, that's still springy. But this second compression ring, it's okay there. But around here, it's actually stuck. It's stuck in the piston. That's not good. And the actual oil control ring, that looks a bit, I don't know. <laughs> it, it moves. It certainly moves, but I'd say this uh, this second compression ring could definitely have been a problem. Obviously not the reason why the engine seized up, but, 
But there again, this engine has done uh, well over 200,000 miles. Ta-da! <laughs> Anyhow, I was expecting to see mass carnage when I took that sump off. Metal bits everywhere, a complete mess so I could make a meal of it. Unfortunately, that hasn't been the case. It's been a right letdown. Remember that video I done? I put it here about a month ago. Mark III Mondeo 2 litre Duratorc, no Duratec, petrol engine. It had ran out of oil, the bloke had hit the sump, it had lost all its engine oil. <laughs> that one did make a mess. That was more, that was a heck of a lot more interesting. But what can I say about this? I can't, actually I can't believe that the actual engine locked up solid and it only jammed up on one, one main bearing shell. Flipping it. The funny thing is, I'm going to pin this, you know like pin the tail on the donkey, well I'm going to pin this engine seizure on the bloody oil pump because it looks pretty badly worn. Which is, which is funny you know because the actual big end shells, they're like brand spanking new. There's not even anywhere on them, on them at all. And this is done, I'm not sure of the mileage, it's well over 200,000 miles though. I'm going to show you something which could be, it's, no it's actually of no relevance, but if I go back four or five years, we had a whole bunch of, they were called uh, Peugeot Expert Euro cabs. They were like a, a shittier version of the Peugeot E7, you know, like the eight seaters. They were quite nice to start with because they were all brand new, but they soon fell apart really quick. But we had about eight of them, I think. And I think three of the engines seized up. And there was a particular reason why these engines were, were actually seizing up. And these are what are the DW10 engines. They're the Peugeot engine. The same as what goes in like the Mondeos. The trouble is, there's so many variants of these engines. They all look the bloody same, but there's so many variants. I've still got an oil pump from one of them Peugeot Expert vans that we never actually got round to fitting because what we done was after, after like three of them seized up and there was a specific reason why they seized up and I thought it'd be the same case with this car but it's not, this is a totally different oil pump. So I'm gonna show you this oil pump because I'm, I'm gonna show you what went wrong with them oil pumps and we changed all the oil pumps in them vans. Anyway, let's have a quick look at it. Flipping Nick, I'll tell you what, this has been sat in our stores for flipping ages quite some years now. Right, get that out of the way. Now, this is an oil pump out of a Peugeot Eurocab DW10 engine. Peugeot Expert, whatever, I think. Yeah, they were, they were 2012 models, these cabs. And uh, this oil pump, which is totally different to what's in the, this Mark V engine, but Here's the thing, they've still got the same setup on the chain. You'd have the chain on here, which would go onto your crankshaft. There's no tensioner, it'd just be like a loose chain. And the crankshaft, when it turns, it'll just spin your oil pump. Now these particular oil pumps, they had a flaw in them. Whoops. They would actually, the casing, where this, this shaft would run through and in, into your actual oil pump, this casing would develop a crack and then it would just lose its oil pressure. It wouldn't be able to pump the oil where it's supposed to. <laughs> It'd be losing its oil pressure out the crack. If I remember rightly, they never, they never seized up or nothing, and we never had a broken chain. But they, these casings would crack. It would just lose its oil pressure. And like, if you were doing like 70, 80 down the motorway, you know, by the time the oil light come on, it was too late anyway. It would have already done in probably the, the main bit, the main bearings or the big end shells. And that was the end of the engine. So yeah, I just thought I'd show you that. This is, this is like, I doubt if this will ever get fitted to anything now. But yeah. Anyway, I don't think we'll be rebuilding this engine. I guess really, 
if that crankshaft was sent to like an engine rebuild centre, they could probably fix that crankshaft and then it could be rebuilt back up. The problem is, you could probably buy a second hand engine for sort of like a, about the same money as what it cost to put this right. I think I'll just strip it for bits and keep any bits and pieces that might be needed in the future. Put it this way, the cylinder head alone and all the rockers, the, the rockers are like 500 pounds worth and all the hydraulics have it. Flipping heck, there's, a, there's actually a lot of money's worth on that old engine uh, which, which I can put on another car when they go wrong. Anyway, what else we got? We have got a windscreen on a Ford Focus 53 plate. I'll tell you something, look at this. This is the, uh, let me just point out here, I am not a windscreen fitter. I have not been trained to fit windscreens. So you, you see the state of that? It only had a little crack in it to start with. And that, that, that's, that's what it ended up like where, after I removed it. So you can see I can remove a windscreen proper. Mind you, normally it's not my fault because there's a seal on these focuses. Anyone who has to fit a focus windscreen, you'll notice there's like a rubber seal and it's got metal in it that runs all the way around the outside. And I use like cheese wire. Flipping it, it's a pain. It kept, it kept bloody breaking the wire down this edge. And this, this sealant was like as tough as old boots. So I really struggled getting that out. I normally do take a windscreen out in pretty good shape. Not like that. That's, a, that's like an, a one-off. Anyhow, that's the end of the video. Of course, it's bright out here. Woo there we go. Oh, I'm actually sweating inside that garage. So warm. I thought I'd just come out in here for a breather. Ah. Should we go in the Noin Monica? <laughs> She's busy. We're having this, uh, this outbuilding done up. It's all being painted and the floors are going to be done as well. It's going to be like a little workshop. Look at that radio, Alba. I ain't seen an Alba radio in bloody years. That come out of the art, didn't it? What are you put your hood up for? <laughs> I suppose I better end this now. It has gone on for a long time. Flipping heck, it's been like over 40 minutes, isn't it? Nearly an hour long. We'll be making, we'll be making feature films soon. <laughs> the only unfortunate bit is, this was a bit of a boring video because it was a, it was a shit outcome. I wanted to see a lot, a lot more damage, but it never happened. Not to worry. Anyway, till the next time, guys. See ya. There's no interior mirror on this windscreen. <laughs> yup. Bingo! See ya!